Welcome to the lectures on computer graphics. Uh, in the last few classes, we have been discussing various visible surface detection algorithms or VSD algorithms. And uh, uh, the first pre-processing stage of any of these VSD algorithms is the concept of back face culling, where we remove all the back faces from the scene. Okay? We are trying to render a set of polygons and we remove all the back faces are the hidden faces and then of course, the visible surface detection will actually show you what are the surfaces which are facing the viewer partly or in full. Okay? And uh, the among the various VSD algorithms which we discussed, uh, the we started with the concept of the depth buffer or Z buffer algorithm first and then we moved over to the concept of scanline algorithm, which was an extension of the two dimensional polygon filling. Uh, algorithm now in C D and then of course, we discuss the painters algorithm or the depth sorting algorithm. Okay. Uh, after that, we talked about area subdivision method, the concept of BSP trees. Okay. This was covered in the last class and at the end of the last class, I gave an insight about the concept of ray tracing, which we will discuss at length in the class today. Now, if you uh, think of all these different VSD algorithms. Um, starting from the Z buffer over all over across the painters algorithm to the BSP trees, uh, you will notice that in none of these methods, uh, there is a talk about light rays, which uh, are the uh, main reason for image formation. Either when you see an image through your eye or you capture a picture using a digital camera or a video using a camcorder, the concept of image formation. Uh, from the basic theory of optics and physics says that we have a light source. Let us say when you are in, in an outdoor environment okay, uh, during daytime, the principal source of light energy is the sun. And then of course, you are in an indoor environment in a classroom or in a building. The light source are the artificial lamps, the incandescent lamps and the tube lights and various other types of light sources and they help us to view not only the human beings the animals uh, kingdom and the birds and as well as if you visualize the artificial sensors, uh, the man made sensors like the digital camcorders or digital cameras which are used to capture the picture. The concept there is the light rays are emitted by the source, they are emitted in some cases in all directions, uh, sometimes in a certain direction maybe, and they fall on the object surface. The object surface deflects a part or the whole of those light rays towards the sensor or towards the viewer or towards the projection plane in this concept of computer graphics. Of course, uh, how much of it is reflected in what direction we will talk of those models in rendering, but assume that uh, the light rays are emitted in full or in part towards the projection plane and uh, those light rays go and hit the pixels. Okay, the image set of pixels in the case of a digital camcorder or in the case of the human eye, they will hit the rods and the cones in the retina and that helps us to visualize the image. So, that is the theory of the image formation and the light rays are the principal cause or the reason why we are able to see why an image is formed. But in all of these VSD algorithms, there has been no talk of this real phenomena because in computer graphics, we know that we are creating reality. It is a concept of trying to create virtual reality, visual realism in the picture and nowhere the exact uh, concept of this image formation process in terms of optics theory, light rays coming out of the light source, hitting the objects, then getting reflected back into the projection plane or the sensor is not being talked about. So, this is the main uh, or al almost the only concept 
uh, which is discussed in ray casting and which tries to model the basic theory of image formation. Let us look back into the picture which we saw in the last class visible surface detection algorithm of ray tracing where we see of course, I must remind you here that we use the same figure when we talked about uh, concepts uh, of uh, Z buffer algorithm and there we were talking of this direction of projection vector or the ray which is moving towards the center of projection from the uh, from points on the object surface and we were basically comparing depth uh, along uh, the, that particular direction. Here this dashed line indicates a ray, I repeat the dashed line indicates a light ray which could be reflected from object surfaces towards the projection plane. So, this uh, square rectangle let us see is a projection plane which is used to view the scene and you will see that a particular right ray along a particular direction which is a direction of light ray, the, the ray could be deflected by various objects, but the object which is closest to you closest to the viewer will ref actually will be reflecting the light towards the projection plane, the other uh, light rays reflected along the same direction at the same position from other objects will be not be seen because they are hidden or occluded. So, I repeat again the closest object surface, so Z com depth comparison is again is a key, but the concept here is about the light rays and the closest surface corresponding to any point on the projection plane you will be able to find out which is the closest object and the light ray reflected from that point will be responsible to create that particular scene of the object. Remember at any particular point x y on the projection plane you are going to see only one object, you cannot see more than one object okay? and that object is closest to the viewer in terms of a set of other polygons which will occupy the same position x y. Remember we are talking of the canonical view volume orthographic projection model where from x, y, z set of points on the surface of polygons in 3D you need to just chop off the value of z and you get the corresponding point x, y which are the projections of a point in 3D to 2D. So, that is the advantage of using project orthographic projection model. Here we are talking about the last stage of 3D viewing pipeline. I, I kept you reminding this concept several times in this sequence of lectures of when we discussed in VSD algorithms and here from x, y, z it is simply we can get x, y. But of all those polygons or all those planar surfaces or even curved surfaces which occupy that point x, y and various values of z, the one which is closest to you will, uh, will give rise to the intensity for that point x, y. So, what we do is now since light rays are coming out of the source getting reflected by the object surface and coming towards the viewer in con the concept of VSD ray tracing we just reverse the direction of the light source or the light ray. We traverse in the reverse direction that means given a point x y on the projection plane we actually uh, traverse in the direction of the opposite to that of the light source. That means, from the point x, y we move towards the object and we hit a particular object which is closest to the viewer and from that point we try to find out what are the different sources of light which are visible to that object point and based on that we can shade the uh, particular point x, y. We will talk of those shading uh, and rendering models uh, later on after we finish VSD algorithms, but the concept of ray tracing is just the reverse phenomena of what is happening in the process of image formation. So, that is why it, it is called ray tracing or ray casting and remember we are just reversing the direction of the light, remember light travels in a linear path. So, let us uh, visualize this particular uh, imaginary figure where on the left hand side we have a matrix of n cross n. <coughs> pixels n cross n pixels and we I have just shown two light uh, sources. In fact, the reverse direction of the um, light uh, actual direction of the light uh, ray we have just uh, going in the reverse direction. So, we ray cast from the uh, from a particular point x y towards the object and so we have two points x 1 y 1 x 2 y 2 here and two rays will be uh, um, uh, uh, coming out of that projection plane in a normal direction, normal to the projection plane and it will hit certain points on the object surfaces and based on the color of that object surface based on the light source we will be able to render those object surfaces. So, this is what we do uh, where I repeat again in a actual uh, real scenario light rays will be coming out of the surface hitting the object and moving towards the viewer. In this case it is just the reverse phenomena ray casting just tries to model the image formation process by reversing the direction of the light. 
It's as if you are not sending light back, but you are casting a ray back, an imaginary ray which is traveling in the direction opposite to what the light would have traveled to create that same image. So, you are trying to simulate reality. Okay, this is the, the, the field of computer graphics tries to create reality and that is why the other term uh, which is used is virtual reality. Okay, we are trying to create a picture as real as possible and give effects of visual realism. Uh, ray casting is one of the very most popular and commonly used methods where uh, it tries to uh, simulate reality and gives visual realism. You, there are concepts of visual realism based on anti-aliasing. We know that particular term concepts of radiosity which are used on top of uh, ray tracing and of course, some of the most sophisticated methods might use a combination of ray tracing and z buffer methods to really create very complex pictures which appear very, very realistic or real. Okay? So, come back to ray tracing. Remember for z buffer, each x y z point on a polygon surface corresponds to orthographic projection point x y on the projection plane or view plane. We already talked of this because you given any point in 3D x y z, you need to just chop off this value of z and the first two terms will give you the two dimensional projection in case of orthographic projection, okay? two dimensional projection of a point in 3D. Okay? So, at each point x y on the projection plane or view plane, these terms are used interchangeably p p or v p you can talk about. Object depths are compared by using the depth values. I repeat again at each point x y on the projection plane, object, object depths are compared by using the depth of z values. So, for ray tracing, we basically shoot a ray from the eye point through a pixel x comma y into the scene. We just seen that in the picture uh, in the previous slide and then what we do? We intersect this with all surfaces, find first one the ray hits, okay? intersect this ray with all the surfaces and find the first one which the ray hits to find out which is the object we are seeing at that particular point x y. Remember for each point x y on the scene you have to do this. It is computationally a very expensive method, very costly. But uh, as you uh, know that when you want to have reality complex pictures, you have to pay the price of computation. If you want to do it very fast, there are other better methods which you can use, but you will have a very coarse picture, not a very fine and nice picture, not looking very realistic. It will appear uh, as a virtual scene like any video games or a cartoon type of a picture which you can easily simulate, but you want to simulate reality, you have to pay the price of the computation. Okay, so, that is uh, uh, what we should remember that the computational complexity is basically order n square where n square is the size of the image pixels. If you have an image array of n cross n, you have to shoot out that many rays from each particular point x y and for each ray what do you do? You find out what are these objects which this ray will go and hit because it will not hear all the objects because um, uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the all set of n polygons will not intercept this particular ray actually. So, it will hit a subset of this ray. It could may not hit a, any object for that matter. It could just hit one, it could hit two or in fact many more and you basically if you hit one or more such objects, uh, then you need to find out in case of many objects, which one of them is closest to the viewer because that will be responsible for shading that particular point x y or pixel x y on the scene. Okay, so, we keep uh, looking at the other points for ray tracing where the reverse direction of this uh, ray which is casted, we talk of that as a line of sight of each pixel and that is intersected with all the surfaces. You need to shade that point to compute the color of the pixel x y. Uh, we will talk of these shading models uh, in the next class and consider only the closest surface for shading. That is what you do before shading in fact. You need to find out the closest surface for shading and based on optics of image formation, paths of light rays are traced. I repeat again, based on optics of image formation, paths of the light rays are traced. This is a scenario which you may have that there could be multiple light sources, let us say, illuminating a particular object, two or more. So, when you hit a particular object surface and find out which is the closest one after you have traced a ray back, from that object surface you need to find out how many light sources are visible. It, it could be a case that some light sources are visible from that object surface, some of the others could be occluded by some other object surfaces. It is possible that you have a light source here, but another object surface is actually hiding the, uh, the particular object surface which you are is used to 
compute the shade that is the surface which the ray has gone and hit at the current point of computation at the current stage of iteration. And of course, there could be other light sources on the other direction which are visible. So, you need to compute based on those light sources the shading or the color of that object surface to render that particular point x y. So, find out come back to this based on optics of image formation paths of light rays are traced and then you consider only the closest surface for shading and then shade the point to compute the color of the pixel x comma y. Okay. Light rays are traced backward. Okay. Trace backward means um, in the direction opposite to watch the naturally flow in, in computer graphics we in, uh, in the case of ray tracing we are tracing this in the reverse direction. <laughs> it is also suitable for very complex curved surfaces. We have not analyzed much of complex curved surfaces in the previous VSD algorithms and we will see how ray casting is very suitable for complex curved surfaces. Uh, we will take a couple of examples for these at least one. It is of course, computational expensive we already talked about this uh, and we also need an efficient ray surface intersection technique to speed up the computation. We will see how it is done. Almost all visual effects can be generated. We had seen that many sophisticated algorithms are based on ray tracing although it is computationally very expensive, uh, uh, but to generate visual effects uh, people do take the help of ray tracing based methods. And of course, if you have a parallel environment in a supercomputer or a grid computing environment where you have a lot of uh, processors working in parallel um, um, or a parallel computing environment loosely or tightly coupled, it is possible that you can parallelize this environment. Why? Because computation of one ray does not affect the other one or does not depend on the computation of the shading of another pixel in this particular case. Such a model is not used. Uh, of course, if you use such models you have to take care, but typically in, in case of modeling one ray does not affect the other one. So, you can pick up a set of rays for a, a small sub area or a sub window of the image to be generated and, and give it to a particular processor and the other partition you can give it to a second and third and so on. So, you can partition the image into several blocks and if you have those that many processors to uh, be used for computation you can share the load by giving each such block to each particular processor and the parallelly you can compute the shading for each pixels. The end single processor is not responsible for casting all the rays what you do is simultaneously compute for each block. Okay. So, you can uh, visualize that you can use parallelism to speed up if you have the feasibility. And then of course, it has aliasing problems which have to be sorted out. We will talk about this aliasing uh, problems and anti-aliasing methods even for Bessenham's line algorithm it could be there. We will talk of this when we talk about visual realism at the end of this course. So, coming back to mathematics again which is responsible for trying to find out the intersection of uh, a, a, a surface or a polygon with a ray. It basically, it means that we need to find out the roots of an equation uh, which is basically caused by the intersection of a surface and a ray. So, we take a equation of a surface and the equation of a ray and then we look at a solution for this particular equation surface minus ray is equal to a 0. And typically a ray equation can be very simply obtained in the parametric form because it is just uh, a line in 3D and it is basically given by T multiplied by P and C. What are P and C? You can visualize the C to be the central projection okay, um, uh, 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 from which the rays are coming out and P is the particular point x, y on the image plane or the projection plane. So, you join these two points and cast the ray back that means you keep on looking for increasing values of t which will help the ray uh, come out of the projection plane and enter into the scene and go towards the objects for larger values of the t. So, that is how you obtain the equation for a ray. Equation for a line uh, you know can be written in this form where uh, you obtain the values of x naught, y naught, z naught is one particular point through which the ray is coming out and delta x, delta y, delta z are the other values of uh, the other parameters of the line um, uh, constants for the line which have to be computed from two points okay, x naught, y naught, z naught being one point and if the other point is x 1, y 1, z 1 then you know how to compute delta x, delta y, delta z we have done this several times both in 2D and 3D. Okay, here delta x, delta y, delta z will uh, will be just the difference of the x, y, z coordinates of the two points which are joined to form the line. And this is 2D or 3D. In this case, we have 3D because we have both the 
all the x y, x, y and z coordinates for the line. And this is an equation of a sphere okay, where a, b, c are the center of the sphere and r is the radius. So, that is the equation for a sphere. So, now, what we are interested in is to find out basically render a sphere and we are interested that we take any ray out of a pixel x, y and we are trying to find the intersection of a sphere with a line. I talked about uh, uh, modeling curved surfaces in this case, we will see how easy it is. Just visualize that you have a curved surface and you have a ray intersecting that particular curved surface. We have seen that uh, uh, earlier in cases as well, when we talked about regularized Boolean set expressions and we talked about, uh, of course, we took a projection of a sphere in 2D, we got a circle and a square, which is a, which is a project projection of a cube and we talked about unit intersections of those structures. So, to now visualize that there is existing a ray coming out of uh, an image plane. If you have an image plane, a ray coming out and then you have a spherical surface and intersection of this spherical surface is and with the ray is what you are computing. So, this is the equation of the ray, the equation of a line is the equation of the ray and this is the equation of a sphere. One way is to, uh, to handle this problem is just take the values from the top equation which is given by x equals something, y equals and z equals and substitute in the equation of a sphere. So, please try it out, try to substitute the equation of the line into the equation of the spheres. Please try that out and work it out yourself and what you will get when you substitute the first equation into the second equation you please try it out, you will get quadratic terms in the expressions. You will get quadratic terms, please try that out yourself. When you substitute that yourself, you will get quadratic terms uh, of x, y, z. Try to accumulate those quadratic terms and form a nice expression. If you go into the next slide, this is what you will get after substituting the expression of the equation of the line onto the equation of the spherical surface. Okay? This is what you get and then when you rearrange the terms, collect the terms and try to write a quadratic in terms of the parameter t. Why are you interested in the parameter t? Because that will help you to get the roots of that equation surface minus ray is equal to 0. You are actually trying to find out the value of t for the ray which will go and hit because that will give you the value of x, y, z uh, of the intersection point between that uh, any surface planar in this case a spherical surface with the tree. So, assume a spherical surface here you know, a round strap of a structure and with this spherical surface you are go hitting, hitting a ray from the outside. Okay? So, it is a spherical surface and you are hitting a ray and the intersection point is what you are calculating. So, that can be calculated by obtaining the value of t. As you can see here, please work it out yourself and then check with these expressions with are getting this particular term. The, you are trying to collect the uh, nonlinear uh, terms uh, coefficients of t square, then you collect the coefficients of t and the constant values because x naught, y naught, z naught, a, b, c and r are all parameters of the line and the ray which are all known to you, you have to just compute the value of t. So, that is what you will get for as the expression for the value of t. Okay. So, I hope uh, you can derive this equation uh, very easily because so far we have done lots of mathematics throughout this course and this should not be any big problem for you. Now, quadratic expression of t and you know any quadratic equation will have how many solutions? It will have two solutions okay. and two solutions out of them both could be real or both could be imaginary. You can have also a case of one solution also. In the case when both the solutions are same, you can have just one solution. So, three different cases arise for a solution of t, I repeat again, both real roots of this value of t, one real solution okay, and two complex numbers, two imaginary solutions. Okay. So, let us look at these three situations here. When you look into the slide, the equation is quadratic with coefficients from the constants of sphere and re equations. We have seen that in the previous slide, this is what was the equation. As you can see, the coefficients of t square t and the uh, other third term are all constants from the sphere and the ray. So, you can compute all those and then compute the solution for t and the three cases are, first is no real roots. No real roots means the discriminant of that particular equation for the root of t will be an imaginary quantity. What is the physical significance of no real roots? That means, the intersection is imaginary, there is nothing real in it. The surface, the ray physically does not intersect the surface, it is possible because if you have a sphere here, unless you actually have the ray close by, 
and not only that intersect to the surface then you will actually have an intersection if the surface is here and the ray is somewhere on the top or at the bottom okay and the spherical surface is only occupying a finite volume in your 3D scene and the ray cast is on the top or away from the sphere there may not be an intersection it is possible. So, mathematically what does it come out you will have not have any real roots you will not have real roots the both the solutions and imaginary you just neglect them because there is no intersection of that particular surface with that ray. Okay. The surface and ray do not intersect in the case of no real roots you can have a situation of one real root that is a very interesting phenomena the surface tangent the rays tangentially grazes the surface correct the ray tangentially you can visualize that of course uh, uh, you can have a ray uh, and uh, which is tangentially passing through the surface the spherical surface in this case and what happens in mathematically is the discriminant value uh, if you take a equation of the quadratic form root over b square minus 4 ac that part will vanish that will become 0. So, these two real, real roots now become just one root and that is the case when the, the ray just tangentially grazes that particular surface you do not you will have only one particular. The third case involves the real situation of the case when we have two real roots from both the intersections and the we need to get the one which is the smallest value of t. So, this is the case which is of interest because we uh, of uh, we neglect the case when we have no real roots the first one when there is no intersection the second also when we have one real root and the rate tangentially grazes the surface we actually do not have an intensity point for that particular point x y we may have a line. Uh, and the case of two real roots from both the intersections uh, we get the one which is the smallest value of t. Why smallest value of t? Because if you have a surface and then there is a ray which is coming out of the projection plane striking the frontal part of the sphere and then of course the rear part as well. Remember you have a sphere you know, somewhere is uh, some part of the sphere of course closest to the viewer the other part is on the back side. Of course, if you have removed back face, uh, if you have done back face culling, those that, that part of the surface will not be present in the computations, all right. But assuming the full sphere to be present, and since you are using this equation, so you will get two values of t. You will get two values of t, two real roots in the case when you have actually two intersections of the spherical surface with the uh, line. And what you do is take the smallest value of t, and that will help you to compute the values of x, y, z on the line which is intersecting the surface. So, this is what you do is an example of computing an intersection of a light ray with a uh, any surface uh, complex surface uh, uh, short of a curved surface. In this case you have taken a sphere, but you can take any other surface could be a cone or a cylinder or you can also visualize any uh, curved surface of the form z is equal to f x, y. If you take z equal to f x y form then what basically you have to do is take the ray equation and take the equation of the surface as z minus f x y equal to 0 take that form and also take the corresponding equations from the parametric form of a line and then substitute back and then what you do again you basically find out the value of t in this particular case. So, you can have an arbitrary surface let us say and you have a ray coming out you can visualize that if you have a sinusoidal oscillatory surface or an exponential decay surface something like a Gaussian surface or uh, Gaussian uh, function type of a surface or any other type of uh, uh, variations which you have typically used in digital terrain modeling where uh, sometimes curved surfaces are better to represent than uh, piece wise planar approximations. We will talk of curves and surfaces later on, but if you have a functional form z equal to f x y there should not be any problem for you to calculate intersection of a surface with a ray just substitute the equation ray into the surface form obtain the value of t and that t helps you to obtain the intersection pattern. Okay. So, what is the shade at that point of intersection that is of course, a big question and that question will not be answered now although uh, I am uh, uh, so we bypass that question now and leave it to the uh, discussion stage when we discuss shading and rendering algorithm and since the, but we will just uh, discuss a small point here only with respect to the sphere since the sphere has a center we know the a b c a the center of the sphere and r is the radius the surface normal at any point of intersection in this particular case we are talking only about the intersection of a sphere with a ray and the normal we will later on find out why the normal plays a very important role in computing the shading on intensity the normal at, at any given point x p y p z p on a surface is given by this particular equation. 
you remember when we were talking about solid modeling, when we were also talking about back face culling, the surface normal was a very important uh, computation which we had to always do. We had to always do that because that was not only used for back face culling, we will see that it pays it, it plays a very significant role in terms of the computation of shading. So, you need to compute the surface normal. So, I leave it at that point here that this normal will be used to compute the shading or intensity at that particular point wherever the ray has gone and struck that particular surface in this case of a sphere and we know that uh, just I am giving you the expression for the surface normal of a sphere only at that point x p y p z p. So, given a b c as the center of the sphere and radius r if you know x p y p z p as a as a three dimensional coordinates of a point on the surface of that particular sphere, the normal at that particular uh, uh, point uh, on, the, on the surface of the sphere will be given by this particular expression. I leave it as an exercise for you to derive this uh, very easily. Mm, you should be able to derive this uh, quite comfortably uh, if you know basic geometry where x p y p z p I repeat again x p y p z p at the coordinates of a point on the surface of a sphere which has its center at a b c and the radius is r. Okay. Let us take the intersection of a the simplest case of a line and a plane. Okay. The equation of a plane is a x plus b y plus c z plus d is equal to 0. So, a b c is the surface normal we know that uh, the parameters are direction cosines of the surface normal d is the distance of the or the perpendicular or short edge distance of the plane from the origin. And of course, we have seen the equation of the line many times where uh, how do you get x naught y naught z naught and the interpretation of delta x delta y delta z we have discussed already in terms of the parametric representation of a line. So, when we substitute the same thing we get an expression of t which is given as this. Okay. X, all the parameters on the right hand side are known a, b, c and d are from the equation of the plane and delta x delta y delta z are the expression for are obtained as from the parameters of the line. Okay. So, that is what you get. So, do you obtain d as a single uh, solution in this case unlike when you did not have a quadratic as the case of a surface. In fact, in the case of uh, a curved surface you can have more than one solution more than two in fact. It depends on the type of a surface which you are handling. Uh, in the case of a sphere cone or a cylinder we might have just two, but if it is a highly nonlinear oscillatory type of a surface and the ray is passing through. It, it might be a case that where you can um, uh, have more than even two intersections of the ray with a particular surface. I leave this as an exercise for you to visualize when of a surface it is not difficult comfortably you can visualize that when you have an oscillatory surface a ray can intersect not only one or two, but many many times. In fact, sometimes the intersections can go to infinity the total number of intersections can be virtually infinity. But let us come back to this equation of the intersection of the line with the plane and if you go back to the slide the expression of the t numerator by denominator if you see here uh, the it is just uh, a simple one solution for t is what you get and there should not be any problem of evaluating the t once the values of a, b, c and d are given from the equation of a plane and delta x, delta y, delta z are obtained from the equation of the. Do you really feel that there will not be any problem of computation of t in terms of computation? You have definitely one value of t, there is no doubt about it, there is you have only one solution for t. But always will you have a finite value of t? If we look back into the expression once again in this slide, the denominator may vanish the denominator may vanish and so you can always compute a finite value of t only when the denominator is not 0. So, the denominator should not be 0. When will the denominator become 0? One do you think? Look back into the expression once again. Look into the denominator term, the term in the denominator of the value of t. When will be this expression become 0? You should be able to guess yourself. If you see the term it is appearing as a dot product of two vectors. What are those two vectors? A, B, C surface normal of the plane and what is the other vector? Delta x, delta y, delta z. What is that vector? Delta x, delta y, delta z. You can visualize that is the direction cosines of the vector along the line. So, there are two vectors, one the line itself, another normal to the surface. If these two are perpendicular to one another, what happens? The dot product is equal to 0 and the denominator the expression at the denominator of the uh, for the computation of t is basically a dot product of those two vectors. So, it will not be 0 
only when those two vectors are not orthogonal or normal to each other. Okay. So look back only when the vectors are normal to each other the denominator will vanish otherwise you will always be able to compute a finite value of t. Now, when will this dot product vanish or be equal to 0? That is when these two normal surface normal and line become parallel, I am sorry normal to each other. It is the case we talked of this in the back face culling when the c was equal to 0. That is the surface is in such a manner that the ray is actually passing through the surface, it will not intersect, it will never intersect. In fact, it grazes through the surface and that is the case when the normal and the ray are perpendicular to each other. We do not even attempt to compute the value of t because that also you can treat it as a back face. So, if your back face has been handled in the case of planar surfaces polygons, the, there will not be any scope of the denominator vanishing in this case. So, let us go to the other points, find if the intersection is within the polygon by projecting onto a suitable coordinate plane. You will always get a value of t because if you have a polygon and there is a ray the, the infinite plane will intersect the surface that is that is always the case, but actually you are interested to know whether the ray actually passes through the polygon because that is a finite area in 3D or 2D. Okay. Infinite plane ray will always intersect, but if you take a finite polygon or a triangle the ray may or may not actually pass through the polygon. What do you do? Very simple project the ray and the polygon into a two dimensional coordinate system x y or y z whatever is comfortable and find out if that intersection point which you have just computed using the value of t that projection point we the, take the projection of that point because that point is a 3D, but when you project the, the point and the polygon onto a two dimensional coordinate system you will have everything in 2D and you just simply apply inside outside test when we did in polygon filling find out if that point is within the polygon that is very simply done in 2D. So, that is what you do find the intersection or find if the intersection is within the polygon by projecting onto a suitable coordinate plane. So, you transform the problem from 3D to 2D and the last point which you must remember is that the, the overall processing is done ray wise and not polygon wise. Remember we were talking about image space and object space methods in the previous VHD algorithms. Well, I will say this falls under the category of image space in some sense because you are scanning the image pixels one by one sequentially row wise or column wise and for each row or column you pass through all the pixels and for each pixel you shoot a ray out. So, you are doing in the image space ray wise and not polygon wise for each ray you are computing the intersection for all the polygons or the nonlinear surface which surfaces which exist in the three dimensional scene and then compute the nearest surface and that is what you share. So, the last few uh, points uh, uh, in terms of comparison of the various VSD or hidden surface removal or hidden surface elimination algorithms or visible surface detection various terms are used interchangeably VSD, HSR or even HSE visible surface detection, hidden surface removal or hidden surface illumination we have discussed about half a dozen different algorithms okay, in this class and due to uh, the amount of time left to us we will not be able to discuss a few other uh, uh, algorithms which I expect and uh, request you to read at the uh, couple of them which are important at the A buffer algorithm and the concept based on octrees. We discussed octrees in uh, CSG uh, solid modeling, so CSGs are also used for ray casting. And you can almost visualize that when you have an octree representation of an object, if you remember that that octree type of structure based on the ray direction looking into positive or negative z, you can actually label which sections of those octrees will be hidden or not based on the ray direction. That is the principal philosophy which is used in octrees based, but the computational is not very efficient and the visualization is also not that easy. So, that is why octrees are not that commonly used for visible surface detection algorithm, but and also I will request you to uh, read about A buffer or accumulator buffer as it is called for uh, VSD algorithm. So, VSD or HSR or HSE visible surface detection, hidden surface elimination or hidden surface removal algorithms. I repeat the list of algorithms which we have discussed. We started with Z buffer, then scan line based algorithm, then paint as algorithm which is depth sorting or area subdivision method or BSP trees and ray casting. We will just have a table look through the table when we try to compare these algorithms both in terms of memory requirement and speed, but we must uh, keep in mind that uh, the most efficient methods 
for generating visual realism, virtual reality in complex scenes is a combination of various concepts taken from Z buffer and ray casting put together, because they are the ones which are popular, easy to visualize, easy to implement of course, but except with the uh, point of computational complexity, ray casting is really inefficient in terms of the amount of computational time requirement, but since uh, it, it, it simulates the reality which I talked about earlier on today in terms of trying to simulate the reality in terms of the ray coming out of the light source hitting the object and then coming to the viewer, we are just traversing the opposite direction now. We go along the reverse direction from the projection plane to the object surface and then look towards the, look towards the source which is giving the light. So, that is how the ray casting works and the basic concept is intersection of a surface with a ray which we have seen in the case of ray casting. Okay, that is very simple and either it is a planar surface or a curved surface in any form. We have taken of course, a simple example of only a plane and a sphere. I, uh, I leave it an exercise for you to take another type of curved surface like a cylinder or a cone and try to take the equation of a surface of a cone or a cylinder and then the, um, try to intersect a ray with that and also try similar equations and see what is the results of the values of t which you get. Again you will have two uh, values of t, you can have situations of complex uh, uh, roots which you have to throw out, maybe one real root or two, when you have only two, two real roots or multiple roots, you check the one which is the minimum value of t, because the t increases from the projection planes toward the three dimensional scene toward the object. So, the minimum value of t will tell you that is the closest object which you are intersecting project surface which you are intersecting. Of course, the last step involves either a polygon or a surface, especially in the case of a polygon, you need to find out whether you are actually intersecting the polygon. This is unlike the case of a surface, when you have a value of t, you are actually um, intersecting a, 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 a curved surface, if it is represented in full. Of course, if it is represented in part, it is possible that you will have a value of t, but it could lay outside the smaller part of the curved surface which is represented. So, you need to find out always whether there is a physical intersection between the part of the planar or curved surface with the light uh, ray which is casted back from the projection plane. So, project everything including the ray and the polygonal patch curved or real onto a two dimensional scenario say say, say the uh, z x plane or z y plane and it is a two dimensional problem where you find out whether the x y z point which you computed from the value of t that x y z will now become a z y or z x a two dimensional problem and you find out whether a point is lying inside a polygon or not. So, that is a simple inside outside test which you uh, do for a ray tracing and we will uh, although compared using a table different algorithms keep in mind that the ray casting and the z buffer or a combination of both is the one which is the most sophisticated and what which is used for generating real complex scenarios in the case of virtual reality or to simulate what concepts of what are based on visual realism, based on anti-aliasing, based on concepts such as radiosity which are also used to generate very real pictures. In fact, you can see even light sources along with good shading models, you will see that it is a combination of ray tracing, depth buffer, radiosity, anti-aliasing. These are the three, four common topics which are combined together to give very good visualization of shading and intensity. Of course, we have to discuss shading models which we will start in the next class, but before doing with the time left and available to us, we have a comparison of the various VHD or hidden surface removal techniques, algorithms is in the first column, the memory requirement in the second and the speed on the, on the, on the last column. I have just tried to give a brief idea about the comparative nature in terms of uh, Z buffer, the memory requirement is the most because you need to process basically two arrays. Remember z buffer requires a refresh buffer and also a depth buffer z of x y and i of x y. So, the memory requirement is the is the highest or the most in the case of z buffer and the speed requirement based on the depth complexity which you are handling. Okay. Painter's algorithm or what is called as depth shorting algorithm, it requires one array in terms of memory requirement and uh, the complexity is could be very high. A priori shorting of the polygons will help you to speed up. This is a comment which you can note down that a priori shorting of the polygon will help you speed up the painter's algorithm. What about ray casting? I have compared the main three or four uh, algorithms only, not all of these which we have studied so far. The memory requirement depends on the object database. What do you mean by object database? You are representing a three dimensional scene with a set of polygons or a set of curved surface parameters of the curved surfaces which are in the scene. So, you can have a mixture of curved surface and planar surface, a combination of both 
and uh, the complexity of course, the time requirement will basically depend on the number of pixels on the screen and the number of surfaces, but the memory requirement will be based on the uh, amount of uh, the surface representation, the object representation or scene representation that is the number of polygons which are used, the number of uh, curved surfaces which are used will basically dictate the memory requirement. Okay. The, 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 uh, the buffer, uh, the, the refresh buffer does not have any role to play much in terms of the memory requirement here. The memory requirement is basically the object database. So, ray casting if you look back the memory requirement is uh, on the three dimensional scene, the object database which is uh, um, uh, uh, must be um, plays an important role for memory requirement. Speed yes, it is highly complex, the complexity depends on the number of pixels and the number of surfaces around it. So, if you have n square pixels and p surfaces or s surfaces. So, you can visualize that the complexity computational complexity will be order n square multiplied by s. Okay. Both increasing the resolution number of pixels increases the, uh, the complexity increases non-linearly and linearly with respect to the number of surfaces which are present and modeled in the scene. Well, in terms of scan line or area subdivision method, the memory requirement of course, is based on a, you know, I put a dash because it, it depends on both the uh, complexity in the image domain as well as the object space and the speed means it is the slowest. Why is the scan line area subdivision is, uh, is slowest? Because as you can see, if you remember what we have discussed in few classes back, area subdivision is based on splitting into various submodules and scan line method also fails. Uh, when you need to partition surfaces and all that and you need to compare depths, uh, uh, it is basically a 2D polygon filling, 3D polygon filling algorithm where at each point you need to compare depth and then use it for shading. So, the it is most inefficient and most slowest, it is that is why it is not that popular although the algorithm exists. I did repeat again Z buffer combined with ray casting is the most popular one and that is what mostly used. Well, the algorithms and methods uh, in terms of issues of implementation and a remark for each of those four which we have studied so far, the Z buffer or the depth buffer algorithm is, uh, is the one which is used based on scan conversion and is implementable in hardware. There are specific uh, computer graphics hardware on the graphics accelerator cards which are based on Z buffer and it is of course, which is commonly used is a remark for Z buffer. The painter's algorithm is based on the scan conversion technology and the major drawback for or major bottleneck for the painter's algorithm or what is also known as the depth sorting algorithm is the splitting and shorting. You need to split and short and that is the one which uh, increase the computational complexity that is the major drawback of painter's algorithm that that is why it is not commonly used. Although the conceptual it is very nice to visualize how the painting the painter's concept is used in terms of rendering in terms of ordering depth, but it is not commonly used. The ray casting spatial data structures help this speed up. So, you need to have efficient data structures which can uh, model your uh, solid objects and then excellent for uh, constructive solid geometry or CSG, it is used for shadows and transparency. So, as you can see, uh, when we talked of shadows and transparency, ray casting is the most efficient one. Why? We did not talk of shadows anytime, we will talk of more of that when we move towards hidden uh, mod shading and rendering algorithms. But if you visualize shadows, if you visualize shadows, how do you get a shadow? You get a shadow on a surface because this surface is basically hidden by some other surface. As you can see, when light rays are coming and hitting on the surface, you have perfect illumination. But if I hit this light source, if I had this light source by some other object, you can see the effect of a shadow. Okay. If I remove that occluding one and the light source is visible, you can see that there is no shadow. So, how do you implement this concept using any other uh, conceptual modeling of visible surface detection, you have to incorporate that only with the help of ray casting. Why? When you ray cast, assuming that a ray is coming out of your eye currently and hitting this uh, uh, polygon planar patch, which is my uh, palm, let us say, uh, assume this to be a triangle or a planar surface, as you can see a ray comes and hits. So, what you see at this point, you find that there is a ray, uh, light source which is eliminating that surface. So, you illuminate and shade it. But in the case of shadows, when you have an occluding surface, what will happen from this point? If you have an occluding surface in front, you will actually cast the ray back towards the light source and you will find that there is another object in front sitting in between the light source and this surface being rendered. There is another surface sitting in between which is 
creating this effect of shadows. If I remove it, you will see bright illumination. If I bring it, you will see the effect of light shadows. Okay. So, you can compute that only with the help of ray casting when because when a ray comes from you or from the projection plane hits its surface, then you can cast this ray back towards the light source. And when you are doing that in the reverse direction of the light source, in terms of the reverse direction of the light ray, which was actually coming out of the source, hitting the polygon and moving towards you. Now, when you are ray casting back, after hitting the surface, when you are moving towards the light source, you find that there is another object or a planar patch which is occluding or hiding the light source from the polygon which you are rendering currently for that particular ray. So, do not shade it with the full illumination. Maybe that ray is receiving some of the light from some other direction that is visible. If, if all the light sources are hidden, it is possible that you will have a complete shadow. Okay? Look at this particular case when my face is completely shadowed let us say and I remove one by one. The, the occluding planar patches, my uh, the light source will be illuminating certain uh, polling, assuming that you are representing my face uh, as a solid object, then what you will have is, if you have occluding uh, 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 um, uh, polygons, then uh, occluding the light source, you will have shadows, effect of shadows. You can only do that with the help of ray casting, when you cast a ray to the object and then find out if the light sources are visible or not. If they are not visible, you paint it with a lower intensity or do not paint it and that gives the impression of shadows. So, shadows can be uh, visualized only with the help of ray casting. What about transparency? We did not discuss transparent objects. So far, we have only talked about opaque objects, where the light sources which are impinging on the object are all reflected back or absorbed by the surface. In case of transparent objects, some light sources pass through object, typically glass objects let us say. You can have translucent or transparent objects, but light rays pass through it and objects on the back side of an object, okay, occluder objects will be visible in the case of transparent That means, if you have an object, occluder object on the back side and a translator glassy object in the front, take, uh, take a, a glass in which you use to uh, uh, drink water, then objects on the back side of it will be visible. Okay. So, that is what if you carefully see that uh, the ray casting helps you to implement not only excellent for constructive solid geometry operations, implementing shadows and transparency. This is all done, all complex representations can be handled with the help of ray casting and Z buffer is commonly used also over and above if necessary along with ray casting, because it is efficient for hardware implementation. Scan line and area subdivision, I leave it with a small comment here that implementation is very hard and it cannot be generalized for non polygon models that is for curved surfaces. Curved surfaces it is very difficult to implement concept of scan line or area subdivision method, ray casting is efficient, even Z buffer can be implemented. Painters algorithm exclusively of course, for polygonal objects you have to do a lot of modifications to make it suitable for curved object shapes that is true all right. Uh, whereas, uh, for ray casting uh, you do not have to do any modifications, you can straight away handle not only complexities in terms of shadows, transparencies and complex solid object representations of constructive solid geometry, you can handle all sorts of curved objects, planar objects or a combination of both. So, coming to the last point here, scanline area subdivision method is very hard in terms of implementation, rarely used because it is and it is can, it cannot be generalized for non polygonal models. So, we leave this slide with the point that ray casting is the most efficient one in not only in terms of not in terms of computational complexity, but in terms of implementing real scenarios, real pictures and that is what is the essence of virtual reality or visual realism. This is a small point I want to talk about before winding up this lecture on visible surface detection. We talked about this point that visible surface detection or VSD is also called hidden surface elimination HAC or uh, hidden surface removal or HSR, these are the terms which are used interchangeably. There is a term called HLE. Now, based on these two words VSD and HSE, you can almost visualize what is going to be your HLE. It will be hidden line elimination, it is hidden line elimination. What is hidden line elimination? If you remember the first picture which we when we started to talk about visible surface detection and before back face culling, I gave that example of that Gaussian surface in wireframe diagram, it was not shaded with intensity and the front parts of those surface were visible, the back part was eliminated and it was a line diagram, a wireframe diagram. So, in that case, if you remember that picture where I showed both the front and the back 
lines in terms of faces, the lines in terms of faces and the second picture the lines were eliminated. So, you need a case where you may not need to actually shade the surface, but throughout the hidden lines only. So, hidden line elimination is also a problem like a hidden surface elimination or visible surface detection algorithm and it is just a small extension of all VSD algorithms. I will give you a simple uh, method by which you can turn any VSD algorithm into a hidden surface hidden line elimination algorithm. Let us take the case of scan line or Z buffer. In some essence when you are working from one polygon to another you are rendering one polygon and then the second one and say and so on that means polygon wise object wise and then polygon wise you are entering. When you render a polygon either you can render the whole polygon or only the edge. How you can you do that? Whenever a pixel on the polygon is on the edge you render that you do not render pixels which are inside the polygon. That means, you render only the edges of the polygon and not the inside. Inside you render with only background color and render only the lines of the edges with the lines of the edges of the polygon with a foreground color. This is the essence by which a hidden surface algorithm or a VSD can be turned into a hidden line elimination or a HA algorithm. So, that is the key where we say that the, that is the problem which I leave it for you to visualize, but I give you a clue that you take any VSD algorithm and convert into an H and D algorithm. The essence of that is to not paint the entire polygon inside part you do not paint at all do not render at all you do not have to work the VSD inside a polygon for points which are inside the polygon that you can easily test points which are on the edges you only render that and use the VSD only on the edges of the pixels on which are on the edges of the polygon. I repeat you use the VSD only on the pixels which are on the edge of the polygon in 2D or 3D. So, that is how you implement a HLE algorithm from a VSD algorithm. So, that is the end of the lectures on VSD algorithms. From the next lecture onwards, we move on to the concepts based on rendering and shading, which is an essential part of the last stage of the 3D viewing pipeline, because at the end of every VSD algorithm, we have said that we will paint using rendering or shading models. Okay? So, that is what we will start next class and that is the end of today's lecture and the sequence of VSD or visible surface detection algorithms. Thank you very much. Thank you.